think that was Keith Olbermann. Just grab a pacifier, you bunch of babies. Sure, tr yes, let's face it. Trump ran his critics ragged in 2017, and his critics had a fit. Watch a year-end show on one of the other channels, and it'll probably look like this. <laughs> That was Keith Olbermann. Just grab a pacifier, you bunch of babies. Sure, Trump kept us on our toes, but if critics looked through the tongs of the pitchforks they were holding, they'd see a lot of good stuff happened, like the economy. Did you find a job in 2017? If you did, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. Did your investments do well? Do you have... Oh, they... There you go. I wish I had investments. Do you have more in your retirement fund? Go get your, go get your statement and check. I'll wait. See, I knew you did. Good for you. Are we safer than we were last year? Yes, because in 2017, we dropped the mother of all bombs on ISIS. Talk about sending a message. Trump gave the military the freedom to do what needed to be done. And now ISIS strongholds in Iraq aren't strong anymore. And just for good measure, Trump threw in this. So many young, beautiful, innocent people living and enjoying their lives murdered by evil losers in life. I won't call them monsters because they would like that term. <laughs> He's right. Anyway, he got us out of the Paris Climate Accord, not because he hates the environment, but because he hates a bad deal. He didn't want to spend a ton of cash on a plan that barely moves the needle on reducing emissions. So that saved us money. But again, the left cried like a baby who just had his cookie stolen. <laughs> Ah, I root for the dog every time. And then, of course, there were the tweets, like asking those basketball players for a thank you after springing them out of a Chinese jail or calling Kim Jong-un little rocket man. He didn't call him short and fat. He would never do that, of course. Or calling out Hillary Clinton for not letting go of the election. Remember how she blamed everyone? <laughs> Remember how she blamed everyone for her loss? So Trump told her to get on with her life. That's good advice. Dr. Phil tells people that all the time. And he's bald, so he's got to be right. Of course, there was Kofefi. That's the tweet that Trump chose to delete. Of all the tweets, Kofefi. It's the safest one he's ever done. But 2017 wasn't just about Trump. It was about Harvey. No, not that Harvey. I'm talking about this Harvey. The Harvey that reminded us that Americans, despite our differences, will help each other out when we need it most. The Harvey that showed humanity and bravery. There you go. And generosity. And also, what monster trucks are for? Trucks helping trucks. <laughs> That's the Harvey I'll remember from 2017. Not that other <laughs> So, all things considered a good year. We're safer and more prosperous. What more could we ask for? I'm going to sleep like a baby, while the rest of them are going to scream like one. He's so sharp when he talks, he gives your brain splinters. Greater and host of the Rubin Report, Dave Rubin. He's the tallest and smartest DeVito, which isn't saying much. His latest comedy album is called First Date. Writer and comedian Joe DeVito. She's slim and grim. National Review reporter Kat Tim. And... 
He carries the New Year's Eve ball in his bowling bag, <laughs> former bodyguard, and my massive sidekick, Tyrus. So, Dave, what grade would you give President Trump for his first year in office, and why would you pick that grade? Well, first off, Greg, uh, I think we should give props to, to CNN for licensing you guys' footage of their hosts yeah. at, at the top of the <laughs> show. That was, that was very nice. I mean, yeah. you'd think with the competition, they wouldn't do that. Yes. What grade? I mean, I'd say around a B-ish, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. I mean, yeah. To me, it's the it's the people that have gone crazy is the part that I'm enjoying this. Like we, I always had this belief that most people were crazy. Yes. Now I know it to be true. Yes. Everyone yes. has pretty much lost their mind, and I enjoy tracking it. Yeah, and it's. It, I mean, we've talked about this before. It's it's people driven by their own confirmation bias. And they can't get out of it. Like no. they think if you think that this guy is awful and evil, there's no way you're going to get out of it until you have to step. You have to force yourself out. Yeah. I mean, look, this guy is so rich. Do you think anyone with that amount of money would want to do this job? Yeah, yeah He must true. really want to do it, to have to be around these kids at the parties and, and go and put his hand on the orb in Saudi Arabia yes. and all this other stupid stuff. He could be doing whatever he wants for yes. the rest of his life. He'd rather put his hand on other things. Yeah. Anyway, Apparently. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> on the head of an orphan as he feeds him <laughs> rice. That's what I meant, that America. Was slick. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Slick. Joe, uh, good to see you and your strangely colored beard. Um, what do you think about 2017? What do you think of Trump's performance? What do you think of anything? I would say I'm not going to give him a grade uh, in the usual A to F scale because I think his he would come in at like a Q, uh, a, a number 15. He's completely <laughs> outside the realm of any grading system we've used Be before. Between a 1 and a 10, you would say banana. Something like that. <laughs> yes. I would say tennis ball or tennis. sneaker. Yes. He's completely changed the game and he's brought everybody along with him whether they, whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. He's doing so well that he's making life easier for people who hate him. Yeah. Because if Hillary Clinton had been elected, we wouldn't have had all these stories about men in power uh, abusing women coming out. That's that would true. have continued his business as, as usual. So if you're glad that Harvey Weinstein's been brought down, that any of these other guys don't, don't think uh, these people kept their mouths shut. Thank Donald Trump. You mean because if Hillary had been president? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting. It's an interesting perspective, Cat. 2017. Net positive, net negative, or net neutral. <laughs> well, I'm not going to really grade anything on a social, socially constructed basis like that. I would like to speak more generally and from the heart. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't well, get it. Think about last year when, when he was elected. We were waiting for him to be president. Mm -hmm. he, everyone was saying he was Hitler. We were all going to die. We were all supposed to be in bunkers eating cold cream corn out of cans right now. <laughs> That's what I do. That was, And now we're only doing that when and if we do want to, <laughs> yes. which is fine. <laughs> yes. Uh, they set the bar at, at making it seem like it would be such a disaster, and I'm looking around at my life, and I'm like, it's fine. Yeah. It's actually, it's actually just, just fine. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it, Tyrus? That like, like, um, if you step away from all the emotion, it's kind of normal. I guess, but it's really not normal because there's so much emotion. I think it's a letdown for them that it's not. I mean, they, they predict all this chaos and all these things are going to happen. And yeah, I was excited. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't happen because it's not how it works. He just has a different agenda than you. You didn't win the election. That's it. Yeah. I'm more worried about the guy cutting me off in traffic or the lady who takes too long at the checkout stand. Those are the people <laughs> that affect my life on every day. Not, <laughs> not what you know Donald Trump is doing. Isn't but as it far funny? as a grade, I gave him a C+. Plus. Mm -hmm. We got to work on that citizenship, though. Mm. Probably, you know, he might have a U in the citizenship. Yeah. <laughs> Not getting along with his peers in the classroom. <laughs> talking about raising. It report, some insults at recess. We got to work on that. What but was the report student. card? What was that called in the report card? Do you remember? Incomplete. Citizenship. 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 Oh. You got, either got a, a satisfactory or, in case of young Tyrus, unsatisfactory. Yeah, I always had problems. <laughs> yeah. Mine was called, I think mine was called e conduct. Conduct, yeah. yes. Conduct. Yeah, and mine was always incomplete mm. because I always killed the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I was shipped from school to school, if you called them schools. Dave, you were about to say something? Well, isn't it funny that they can't stop themselves? Every time something happens, they tell you the world is going to end the next yeah. day, right? Power is the World's going to end the next day. Net neutrality. World's going to end the next day. Tax yeah. play. World's going to end the next day. Eventually, you know, the boy who cried wolf, what, had it work out for him? Yeah. There was Not an well. entire Not segment well. about how Diet Coke could be affecting his brain. Yes. yes. He doesn't even drink alcohol. I yeah. drink so much alcohol, and my brain's not affected at all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where we have one of the few uh, audiences that applaud alcohol abuse. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of abuse, you know the Paris Accord, ever since the United States left, 
everyone else is not doing their stuff. Like <laughs> yeah. India and China are like, yeah, yeah, we'll get to it whenever we feel like. But they're still building more coal mines, and they're going with a cheaper electric. They're not doing the stuff that they said they were going to do. Yeah. Everyone's kind of like, because the rule is do it when you feel like it. Yeah. Okay. You know what that is? It's like uh, when somebody's waiting for somebody to like leave a party because you don't want to be the first one to leave. So you got a really terrible party that's thrown by one of your friends, mm -hmm. and you don't want to leave. So you wait for somebody else to leave. Trump just said, I'm out of here, and just and made it very loud. This party sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it was the mass exodus. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things I like about him is that he's not a, a, a butt kisser like all the other politicians we've been used to. He doesn't need any of us. It's great. You could put him on a desert island. He'd behave exactly the same. Exactly. He, he would be bossing around crabs, <laughs> telling coconuts they're losers. He doesn't need us. It's great. It's very liberating. It is weird because there was this period when we were like obviously i was incredibly nervous about him mm. and and uh, but i was like you kept telling yourself oh when he's elected he's going to change he's going to be a different person i was wrong to expect that <laughs> yeah, i was yeah. wrong because you don't want somebody to change because none of us would change no none of us would change and neither did he he was like oh yeah i'm going to be i'm going to be a different person he's actually more trump yeah, well, you, you can't tell the guy who did the thing that nobody said he could do, right? Yeah. You can't tell him to change after. Yeah, 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 yeah. Except, though, the good news is a lot of the people that shouldn't have been there are now gone, right? The, the, the people that cashed in their favors got in and got out within the first couple of months. Or yeah. with that, Omarosa, it took nine months. <laughs> Boy, Omarosa. Yeah. If only he had some sort of catchphrase to let her know she was no longer employed. <laughs> That's if only true. he had some pithy That's two word thing. Like, you're, you're let go. That's right. Something like that? You're let go? Like Hold on. Omarosa's done an amazing thing. She's brought the entire country together. Yeah, it, it is. It was true. the first time in history that MSNBC, CNN, and Fox News all had the same story. We hate Omarosa. <laughs> it was amazing. But it is interesting uh, to see that uh, I, I looked through some of the year end articles, and, listen, and people were saying uh, uh, it's better than expected. And they hated, they were saying it through gritted teeth, that it's better than accepting people that can't stand them. You still see the people that are like, they're going like, something really bad is going to happen. Because yeah. of all the Diet Coke. Yes, yes. Yeah. But I mean, like, the, like, all this could change with a, bomb, a nuclear attack in North Korea, or, he could, or maybe he's secretly crazy, or the Russian thing's going to explode. They have all of these things ready to, to grab, mm. but they're not... They're never there. Yeah, and it's also it's also bringing down people who opposed him. Yeah. That these Russian investigations now now they're saying Jill Stein. Yes. Is a and, and if that's the case, Russia should get their rubles back. Yes. If they, have, <laughs> they put the, the bet on Jill Stein having an impact. Jill Stein. Yeah. The North Korea thing's never going to happen either. Yeah. Kim Jong Un's having way too much fun fighting with Donald Trump. Yes. He knows that no one else will be as good and fun to fight with. I've been in entire relationships like that. Yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. They love each other. They'll yeah. never in a stop. strange, perverse way. All right. What's in store for 2018? How the hell should I know? I'm not a psychic, America. I don't even know how I'm getting home tonight. <laughs> Greg, Gigi, large lump of coal, a very, very large lump of coal for you. Happy New Year, Greg. <laughs> Starting to see a pattern with these New Year's wishes. <laughs> anyway, why is it all the men in my life? Anyway, should we fear the new year as 2017 comes to a close? Some shows will make stupid predictions about. Spent half the year's budget on that. <laughs> I had to fire three employees. Anyway, here's my bold predictions for the year 2048. Muna Largo, or Muna Largo, is America's premier space golf resort with 18 holes over a landscape of three craters and a big, beautiful wall. Back on Earth, Tiffany Trump is getting ready to be sworn in for her first term. Very excited about that. Amazing that Hillary insisted on running against her after all those years. <laughs> Must be the meerkat blood. Uh, Tiffany's running mate, Trey Gowdy, who looks <laughs> exactly the same because he's obviously an immortal and very beautiful vampire. And finally, in 2048, Radiohead is still not in the Hall of Fame. Here's a look at the album they released that year.
See, I think they're just getting better and better. <laughs> they're just getting started, Joe. Joe, in the near and distant f future, I don't care what you think. Uh, what are you looking forward to? Well, I think it's unfair that people looked at this past year and wouldn't let some people enjoy it. Because right. Taylor Swift said she had a good 2017, and people got all over it, and she had a wonderful year, and uh, I couldn't be happier that we're engaged. Oh, fantastic! So I like you know, I, you guys do seem like a, a, the perfect couple. Uh, she's yeah. like, you're, you're the yin and yang. She's super successful and beautiful. And I have most of my teeth. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, but now that we've said that, isn't it hard to picture either of us not with the other one? <laughs> You know, that's the, that's the art of persuasion. You put it in uh, Taylor Swift's head. The law of attraction. Exactly. I'll get her home phone number for you. Uh, Dave, uh, do you think, uh, what, what do you see happening? Good things, bad things? 2048, I mean, it seems obvious to me that we will all have slowly morphed into Trump. At yeah. that point. <laughs> like, he is in our minds. He's, yes. We're going to all start becoming a little more orange. Mm. We're all going to start getting weird hair plugs. <laughs> yes. We're all going to start speaking only in Twitter-length sentences. Yes. Like, it's, it's happening. It's, it's happening happening right now. Yeah. Uh, by the way, speaking of Twitter, they have to, before 2048, remove that, the double length, because I don't read Ugh. Twitter anymore. Don't read it anymore. People are writing like, Peter, people are writing like diary entries. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's disgusting. Uh, Kat, thank Was you. Was anyone... I get applause over Twitter. <laughs> Was anyone on earth like, I need more Twitter? Twitter? No, no, yeah. no. By the way, by 2048, Twitter will be gone, because we'll have it in play, we'll be in, have thoughts in our head that we can shoot to people, Kat. Like when I'm thinking, what do you hear my question right now? I was going to say, is that my question? Yes. <laughs> right. I'm sending it to you through telepathic waves. Oh, boy. All right. 2048. I feel like by then the president will be named like Aiden. You know, <laughs> and he'll get, he'll get really mad if you spell it with an I instead yes. of a Y. Um, there'll still be all kinds of problems like traffic and baldness and all the other, you know, things people have problems with. And I'll probably be dead because I don't drink enough water. <laughs> That's true. No, you'll be alive because you preserved yourself and all the alcohol that you drink. I don't drink that much alcohol. Uh, <laughs> you're like gave, one of those. Who gave you that idea? Am you I? did. Yeah. You're, you'll be like one of those animals in a jar that you see at a sideshow. Well, you're supposed to drink six to eight glasses of water a day. Mm -hmm. Is that true or is that sleep? Yeah, I think, yeah, sleep. I think so. You're supposed to sleep in I just water. live how I want to live, and however long it lasts is fine with me. <laughs> there you go. Tyrus, uh, do you have predictions or feelings? Um, anything? For I know you have no feelings. What? 2048? Anything up to that? Uh, by that time, hopefully, whatever fish is left in the ocean has ate my ass. So <laughs> I don't plan on hanging around. I'm, I'm big. We're like Great Danes, bro. <laughs> when I saw you put it up there, I was like, damn, I don't, no clue. I won't be there. Um, I'll be 60. Yeah. I'll, so, I, you know what? By the time yeah. it goes around, like I said, I'm, I'm out of touch now. Yeah. So me then, uh, man. All right, then let's bad. go to next year then, Tyrus. Stop depressing oh, us. Ne next year? Yeah, what's how's next year going to look? Let's you asked me what I'm doing three days from now. I'm like, damn, uh, can I get back to you? <laughs> Do you have any, anybody have any big predictions that could happen? Anything could happen? I think everything's going to be fine. Uh, yeah, that's too. How about, is that, I think that's actually a bold prediction. Yeah, I think, I think that, that, that is, is bold. Yeah, that is bold. Fine. Well, we're going to take a break. <laughs> Still to come, our favorite moments from a year of shows. If they don't feature uh, me, someone's getting fired. <laughs> Happy New Year, Greg. I hope 2018 brings meaningful breakthroughs in chlamydia research. <laughs> Is that some kind of, some kind of island? <laughs> anyway, thanks, Tucker, for sharing that. That was our secret that we shared. <laughs> so today, our producers asked me what my favorite moment of the show was this past year. My answer, of course, was anything with me in it. Can you blame me? I look awesome, especially for a 32-year-old. Still, sometimes even I screw up. Have a look. Emily, what are your, you're, you, know, you deal with this stuff all the time as a prosecutor. Are you a prosecutor? No, but here, here's my favorite. <laughs> but I'll play one tonight. I'm the best host on television. <laughs> I just like that because you know, some guests would be polite and go, yes, but she just said, no. <laughs> so we know we'll never see her again. Actually, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's delightful. All right. I guess, uh, Tyrus, what's your favorite moment from this year? Hmm. Yeah. So some of you may know I got to fill in for the White House every once in a while as a uh, substitute press mm -hmm. presser. So, you know, um, here's one though, and I thought went pretty damn well. 
what it is. First question. A lot of people are still scared of nuclear power because of nuclear waste and nuclear plants. Ah, oh, man, this is getting boring already. Anyone want to talk about the new Game of Thrones? Are you concerned about the direction they're going? Yes, thank you, Kevin Cork. I am concerned. They've already veered off from the books way too much. We need George R.R. R. Martin to finish that next one stat. Have you had that conversation with him? Do you know if he shares your view? Yeah, I called his ass, and he told him to get writing, and then he hung up on me. Now I'm thinking I might go to his house, bust down the door, and say, bro, you need to finish those books before H. F's up your vision. You're inflaming everybody right here, right now with those words. Excuse you? What you just did is inflammatory to people all over the country. Um, first off, the books are always better. And the only thing inflammatory in this room is your goatee. Damn. Can we get a quick zoom on that guy's goatee? <laughs> I think we need to form an independent council to determine if your barber performed a hate crime. <laughs> See, even lady from NBC agrees with me. His goatee is horrendous, isn't it? He get hazed? <laughs> I thought so. Last question. Talk to me about and us about your plans. It is basically being wanted by many countries around the world. Ma'am, I wasn't fishing for compliments, but yes, I'm in demand around the world. But I like my job here, so I ain't leaving. Well, at least not until that guy gets to shave. Hashtag mama, there goes that man. I'm out. You know he shaved his goatee. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> he shaved his goatee. He's, he's clean now. He's I just want to make a note to the producers that when we said favorite moments, they were all supposed to be of me. Uh, anyway, all right, Dave, you were on. You had a couple of good times here. I did have some good times here. <laughs> that was a great line. Line, line. Uh, yeah, mine was that time. It took me a little while to catch on to what we were actually talking about. Hmm. Excited to talk to you about my new book, Hacks. I wanted to write this book to tell my story. When you read the book, the book is, it's, it's, it, it tells some hard truths. I wrote this book because I had characterized in the book. That, that's why in the book, that is a great question. And let me tell you, it's in the book as well. People are just questioning why Donna would write her book. Well, my first question is, did Donna Brazil write a book? I'm unclear. Was yeah. there a book involved in this? Just to be totally clear, did, did Donna Brazil write a book? Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what happened here. Poor Donna. So she did write a book? Yeah, she did write a book. She did write a book. It was a, actually the best book ever. All right, uh, Kat, you're up. Oh, hi. Well, my, did I see you arguing with the bouncer outside the club on Saturday night? They clearly weren't letting you in. Was your name not on the list or what? You're, you're right. There, there, there were two lists, as I recall. Uh, and I wasn't on the first list. Damn, that sucks. So what did the bouncer say? And he said, Neil, you're not on the list. <laughs> and I said, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, you're right. I'm not on the list. He said, you should be on the list. Oh, nice. So you, so you did get in. All right, cool. So who would you rather eat pancakes with? Rosie O'Donnell or Biz Marquis? I don't see why it has to be a choice. Yeah, but it's your job to have to make tough decisions just like this one. That's your job. Wait, how is that my job? Forget it. Whatever. What would you change about Red Lobster's Cheddar Bay Biscuits? I wouldn't change a thing. You're right. That was a trick question, and you did pass. So, last question. My friend Brian is a big fan of yours. He's in the back. Can you just wave to him? Brian? There you go. Awesome. Thanks, bud. Good luck in the club. I love her. Yeah, she's, she's really, so smart. She's really good. She could probably do this show when you're out, I think. I don't know. But anyway, he just still reminds me of the host from Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> what? Tom, Tom Bergeron. Bergeron. <laughs> yes, Tom Bergeron. I see him. I just think he's Tom Bergeron. We have a past. Oh, Joe. I think you're up, right? Yes. What's your favorite moment? This uh, is where you ad lib. Yes, it's um, it's so hard for me to choose just one because almost none of them actually aired. Yeah, that's because, true. Yeah, it's true because I every time you were on the show. Yeah, and I I want to impress upon the people here at Fox News that when when they want to cover breaking stories, they have to ask themselves, how does this affect Joe Devito? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because uh, sometimes I put on a clean shirt. Yeah, you do, you do. You do. Uh, you know. But th there was, and, and I shared my recipe for cold fusion. Yes. I got that Beatles reunion we were working on. Yeah, None of this true. The fact, and we totally, we totally blew it out. You had the three remaining, two remaining the Two Beatles. remaining, yes. It was a fantastic thing. Although we do have um, one of my best moments, and I, I'm very proud of this particular, if we could just show the clip right now. Mm -hmm. 
colorful. You know, um, but you know, that's true. You, I think, are the most bumped guest. Not bumped, but the guest that has showed up and do the work and then it, you, no one ever sees it. Yeah, I'm a jinx. You are a jinx. I'm a cousin Oliver. You are a cousin <laughs> for Brady Bunch fans. That was the worst character ever. ever uh, yeah, he's a killer. Yeah, killed the show. They should have said it jumped the Oliver. <laughs> Although that sounds a little, little perverted. A little bit. Yeah. He's now 60, so it doesn't matter. I think he's like 60. Can I just ask you one other thing? Sure. <laughs> Did Donna Brazil write a book? <laughs> All right. I just thought of another favorite moment. Something Walter Kern said back in October. I forgot about this. I am so much freer sitting here on Fox News in front of all of America than I am in a college cafeteria. <laughs> that, that quote has to be on a t-shirt. If you own a t-shirt company, I want you to make that t-shirt. So anyway, I got like 70 <laughs> shirts uh, uh, that have this on it, uh, which is exactly what he said, which I can't read because it's, I am so much freer sitting here on Fox News than I am in a college cafeteria. It's like, <laughs> look at all these, come here, come here, look at all. Then there's this, look, I got another one here, then I got another one, there you go. And then, uh, there's the last one. So, like, these are just a few, but we got a lot of these. Well, we'll be giving them away to the studio audience. All right. Don't go anywhere. Up next, our best commercials of the year. Oh, damn. Oh, no. <laughs> Who's he to judge? <laughs> All right, like any successful show, we'd be nothing without William Devane. It's true, without him, how would you know where to buy gold? 